All right, folks, so today we're going to replicate this on this side. Now, when I cut this side here, I had removed the trim uh, just to keep things less dusty and all. But then when I put this in and I attached uh, just a few, just like 25 Clicos on here to hold it all in place. And you might have seen in the quick short that I did, uh, showed the underside. So I took the measurements that are in the YRM workshop on their website uh, for this Puma conversion. And I made the cuts right where they said, and still a little bit more. I mean, I could have done definitely another six, seven millimeters for sure to cut less. I'd rather cut less than more. Same thing on the top here. Uh, the width was pretty dead on. So what I did was, for instance, they said 185 millimeters from the back wall to here uh, and I ended up being like right on the edge so what I did was I cut no oh, I'm, I'm gonna mark on the other side like 187 just to make sure that that piece of metal tucks underneath the lip of the of the top sheet of, of uh, aluminum uh, back here it said 180 millimeters from here I'm sorry 195 millimeters from here to here so I went 200 millimeters just to make the whole the cut a little bit smaller uh, from the bottom up it said 180 and I went 185 now I have to re recut it again no problem I'll let you know while I'm doing the video and that way the hole will be more exact uh, for, you know for this piece on that side now here's the piece raw sitting out here now the one that they use in the workshop already has the holes that will match up with the under with the underside support it already has the holes here where the brackets would go this one does not this might have been an earlier version or a later version i'm not sure i bought this from someone in the states that had already bought the system and decided not to do the conversion because i will have to install these pieces underneath and these have the nuts welded in a particular spot that will match with with these so i can't just go ahead and make you know make the holes anywhere you know these are going to go here somewhere so what i did was i put the trim back on because once the seats arrive in a few days I will put them together, put the brackets together, uh, connect them to this, and then just present them right here, folded forward and tilted up out of the way, and they should fit inside this recess in the trim. Once I have it fitted with the brackets, you know, those, that like tall bracket that goes right here and the same thing on the front. Once those things are in place, I'll have someone hold it in place right in the center of this indentation in the trim, and then from this side, I will make like three holes. Basically on, on this plate, I can just, you know, drill a hole down on, you know, on both of these sides, drill these out, do, drill these out, these out. And then I can remove everything from here and I'll know where it is that I have to like sandwich the, that support plate over there underneath this side in the fender well. And at that point is where I'll remove the rest of the, uh, of these uh, structural supports here. And I'll remove exactly what I have to remove. I do have to remove this completely down. And I will have to remove these over here, but I'll do it in, in, a, in a more professional setting to where I have more access to things. Cause I do need to, you know, loosen up these two so that that bottom lip can slide underneath there and line up with the holes that I'm making on the on the bottom of the tub for for these holes here, down here because this goes like that all right hopefully you'll you're able to follow along uh, let, let me put this away and get back to it okay so we're back so that's on there so that when I put that piece in I'll be able to line it up so I'm gonna go ahead and leave this on there if I have to do some more cleanup that's okay the dust in here was absolutely incredible. It was everywhere. Uh, took a long time to clean everything up. And so some of the few things that I got, you know, I got the uh, the Clicos, uh, they're, they're linked below. 
to where you can click on them and order the same ones that I got and it came with this tool. At first I got a set of 25 1 8 and 25 3 16 uh, that came with a bag and then when I put all 25 of the 1 8 I figured I only wanted to make a 1 8 hole. Uh, so there's a drill bit for that. And so I used all 25 of them on this side and I said I don't want to make larger holes for the other side. Let me just go ahead and buy another 50 of the 1 8 inch ones and that's what I did. All right, there it is from MRO Tools. There you go. Get your other tool, so now you have two, because what, what happens if that breaks? Not, not bad to have two. And there's the 50 of the 1 8 inch ones. I guess they're color coded. These are copper. The other ones are a little bit brighter. Easy to tell if you're a metal worker and work with these all the time. I'm not. Just a do-it-yourself guy. So... Well, I'll set that up later. So okay, so I have this rubber piece, rubber mat that goes all the way over and over. I'm not going to be able to use this one. I have the newer one that has the cutouts for the bottom of the brackets that go on the seat supports. So this one, this one has a little little tear right there. Uh, nothing too bad because if you put some strips of a uh, of double stick tape on the inside of your well, that'll just stick on there and you won't have a problem. So I went ahead and already marked the cut holes so from out here and if you go if you just google um, YRM Puma conversion workshop on Google it'll come up right away it'll be the first thing that comes up in your search and you can click on that and it shows you the directions of what they did so I measured it out from there uh, then it was a uh, 1075 millimeters all the way across and then you know, you know, 85 from back here and I, you know I went a little bit more because I saw that I can I can make the hole a little smaller to make things tighter and 180 millimeters from here to the top and I went 185 uh, and uh, that's that so now, now I'm gonna go ahead and cut this off now to save a little bit of dust I'm gonna go ahead and just cover that stuff with something or not I guess it's just as easy to clean it because this still has a while before I'm riding in it, especially with the kids and everything. Hearing protection. Breathing protection. You don't want to breathe any of that. It's going to be way worse than coronavirus. Uh, an angle cutter with this 4-inch metal cutting disc. I got these at Harbor Freight. Very inexpensive. Then this 4-inch uh, flapper. It used to be four inches it's a little bit smaller now and that is i think it's grit uh what's the grit on that 36 grit and that just smooths out the cuts makes it a lot smoother now when you open that up you're gonna have exposed uh of exposed vertical supports long screwdriver to kind of dig everything out of there and then a, a vacuum and you'll be able to vacuum all the dirt that has accumulated in there over the last 30 years uh, then one one other thing that i use since i, I can't get the round uh, this round disc you know to make perfect little edge cuts i then turn on to this which i bought for like 25 bucks and then i just do the last little little cuts just a couple of little cuts on all the corners makes removing this a one-piece process uh, okay so i'm about to start the cut gotta protect yourself live to cut another day i can barely see through these things they're so worn all right huh. i want to get a hat so i don't fill my hair with uh, metal shavings but here we go okay so finished the cuts had to do a few with this because uh, this cut back here was a little too far back and I had to go a little further forward because there's a little plate back there let me show you this plate right here that you can put a, uh, a cover that comes down and prevents mud from going to that back area 
So now when I lift this up, I'll have to clean out all the mud that's in here. There is a drain hole back here that this will probably all be all filled up with mud. Same thing with this one and with this one back here. So there's three of those. And uh, I didn't cause a fire. I did wet this whole area while I was cutting just to keep anything at bay. And one thing that I've learned over the years is when you're cutting metal, the little pieces of dust can end up being combustible. So every four or five minutes, I would stop, vacuum this area out, and then continue so that I wouldn't have combustible airborne materials in the area of the cutting blade that would cause sparks. Uh, all of these things I've learned on the my OSHA training for motion picture work around uh, special effects but it comes in handy and it's just common sense so i will take this part off oh yeah it's full of mud filled with mud oh there's mud in there a little mud in here so i'll just start carving this stuff out same thing with this one and it'll end up collecting down there. I'll show you what it looks like in a minute. And I'll use the, the flapper to smooth everything out here. So I use the flapper, a 36 grit flapper to sand off all the hard edges all the way around. I was able to make the cut on the inside so that this little plate is still there. And this still has the captive nuts on both sides that I'll be able to put a like a piece of maybe uh, ABS plastic or something that goes all the way down and prevents mud from just uh, filling that area. You can see there's a lot of dirt down there from what we en ended emptying these out. Now they're all empty. Uh, I can't tell them, I'm not at a right angle. There you go. Now they're all empty. Fuel system is over there. So now we'll put in the plate. But before we put in the plate, I have to remove this little cover just like I did over here on this side because this will take the uh, the mud speaker surround or an OEM one if you have one uh, and the mud speaker surround does need a little bit of uh, modification in order to fit tightly in here so that's what I'll do now but first I'm going to remove this just so I can go ahead and present that plate in here drill it just a couple of holes hold it with Clicos until tomorrow when I have a little bit more energy Okay, so I took off this cover, which was this plate right here. And this one along with the other one will be for sale. I'll put it on the form. But one thing that you have to do is the YRM piece is complete. It goes all the way back here. So you're going to have to make the cutouts for the grommets that lead underneath the tub. And you have to make those cutouts plenty of space so that nothing rubs or anything. Because that'll be, that plate will be on there permanently. So you need to make it so you can pull out and put back in the grommets along with all their, all their cables. Now, I did start that when I first got the plates. I made some rough measurements and I did some grinding out. Now, on the other side, on the left side, it wasn't quite right. I had to make a lot more cuts to make it proper. So now I'm gonna do a test fit, make sure that this insert here fits inside the hole that I cut out and at the same time, see if I you know, mark this to make the holes the proper size. Okay, so the plate has been presented here. I have to do a cutout. I could just put it underneath and bolt this right through this, but since I have to rivet it on, sorry, do use Clicos, then take it out, put the glue, put it on, remove the Clicos, replace them with rivets, and then I'm gonna have to drill and line up the bottom part all that back and forth, I don't want to run the risk of having this off and the door swing open too much and you know crush you know crush one of the lights back there or anything like that. So I'm just gonna go ahead and cut this piece out just so I'll be covered with carpet anyway. Uh, and I, you know this doesn't sit down flush into the hole because it still has all this space to slide back. So I went ahead and marked the holes that I had already marked a little bit better so they don't fit a lot looser and I won't have to worry about it chafing any wires or anything um, and then you know eventually uh, this one right here that's for the door locks will be wired in to the door locks 
This one right here is for the rear brake lights and the wiper and uh, the defrost. So I have to, I have the opposite connector for here, and I'll have to uh, plug it in. And you, uh, plug it into the brake line here that lights up the brakes. Uh, the previous owner already set something similar up because he did set me up with uh, a trailer connection with these two nice connections. He did a great job. Uh, but uh, I probably won't be using this. I doubt I'll ever be pulling a trailer with this. And then uh, i got to wire this to a good solid ground somewhere. Uh, just a little bit of cleanup here, but other than that, you know, that speaker enclosure will hold this just fine. I'll put the speakers on the outside so it won't take up any of the valuable space on the inside for the wires. Uh, other than that, I just noticed that you can run wires up through here and have them come out there if you needed to get something done into the battery box. That would be pretty simple. But, once again, the previous owner had a, a lot of forethought into the future, and he put in this trailer wiring right here with uh, five extra wires that are not being used, that some of them are up in the front and right behind the dash. So it's going to be fantastic that I'll be able to just tag on. If I have you know the, the rear work light that I want it to come on with a switch, uh, I want that, you know, I already have wires here that I'll be able to tag onto it. All I need is one of them to be the positive and the ground will be taken from the chassis down here in this area. Uh, and if I need uh, just really big lights in the back or maybe a cigarette lighter back here for a USB or anything like that, I can do that as well with one of these. I can actually run it this way and just install it right on the trim or something. That'd be pretty, pretty cool, pretty sexy. It will look nice and OEM right there. But okay, so now I'm gonna cut this out and then present and then leave this in here so no critters will get in the car overnight and then get back inside to the kids and the family.